10 bus loads coming over from Connecticut about a four, it's close to a four hour drive. Carolina controls the tip. And quickly going to the goal is Marion Jones. We'll see early on how Connecticut's going to handle that very quick pressure. In North Carolina likes to put on the guards. In fact, the game plan was pressure, pressure, pressure. You know, Elliott handling the ball to Rosati. Inside to Elliott. She is a sneaky and deceptive player going down low a lot. Connecticut with the early lead. Well, all the attention going to 6'7 Walters and 6'4 Lobo. Jamel Elliott picks up a lot of those easy baskets. Here is Lawrence. Can't get it to go. Walters comes down with the rebound and loses the ball. But it is still Connecticut's ball. Against this North Carolina team, you cannot expose the leather at all because their hands are very quick. Lobo will inbounds to Rosati. Again, Rosati against Southern Miss went just one for ten from the field. She's going to have to put some in so that they can relieve some of that inside pressure. She loves a challenge and expects to bounce back today. Walters up top. Pam Weber calls for traveling. She also did not have the game that she would have liked against Southern Mississippi, but these are two very determined young ladies, and their teammates said they're not concerned with what happened against Southern Miss. They expect them to bounce back. And Connecticut coming out with a man to man defense. They like to double down on the post area. Here's Marion Jones. And she nails the three pointer. Marion Jones, just a freshman, averaging 14.4 points. She's been a big addition to the Tar Heels. And she is known for her speed. We will talk about that later. Weber looking inside. And Rosati has her shot blocked. But they can't hold on to it, so it will stay Connecticut's ball. Now, Lobo and Walters, known for shot blocking, will Carolina also well, and knock it around. And any time, Jen Rosati at, at the 5-5 five five goes to challenge Tanya Sampson at 5-9. Ouch. Ouch is right. She's going to think about that next time she goes underneath. Interestingly enough, Connecticut has not gotten the ball inside of Rebecca Lobo yet. Jamel Elliott takes it from outside, doesn't go, and again... Connecticut comes up with the ball. Carolina can't hang on to it underneath Connecticut's goal. Gina Oriema. And here's a look at how Carolina got here defeating Georgia Southern in the first round. Old Dominion in the second, and that's when Charlotte Smith got into an altercation at the end of the game and had to sit out the third round game. And there is Rosati. She needed to get set and get going early after her performance against Southern Mississippi, and she has. Well, that has to give her some early confidence. And now Connecticut falling back. A little sagging, trying to concentrate on it. Oh, look at that. With a lot of confidence, she will put up the three. Six points for Carolina, both on three-pointers. They're up by two. Well, if Samson gets going, you got to watch out. Walters down low. Great pass from Mazzotti. I think that was a good tactical move for Coach Oriama to go with Walters in the starting lineup. We're tied early on. Jones calling for the ball. She'll put up another three. And it's Lobo with the rebound. Another excellent pass from Rosati to Carol Walters. And you can see just how happy Jen Rosati is. Coach said after the game, I told her, just keep shooting. You may miss your first or your second, but we want you to hit your third and fourth. She's taking a little bit more leadership out here. Some great assists for Jen Rosati. Here's the play before where she gets a nice high pass into Kara Walters, the tallest player on the court at 6'7", and then pushing the tempo, she had that other assist. Walters with her fifth point already of this ballgame. Carolina looking to go inside. <laughs> Lawrence knocks it from the outside. That's where all the points have come from the outside for Carolina. Well, for Stephanie Lawrence, believe it or not, her three-point shooting field goal percentage is higher than from inside the spread. Go figure. We haven't heard from Rebecca Lobo. Short on the shot. And Connecticut's going to be called for the foul. It's Carolina's ball. Jamel Elliott with her first foul, first foul of the game. 
North Carolina has never gotten this far into the final eight. They lost last year. As, as we mentioned, here's a two-point field goal percentage of 42 and behind a three of 43. If my percentage is a little higher behind her, I think I'd take more shots. And going strong to the goal is Charlotte Smith with her first two points of the game. Rosati bringing it back up quickly for Connecticut. North Carolina so far doing a very good job defending Rebecca Lobo. And this ball is going to be against the freshman, Carl Walters, trying to get position. A foul away from the ball. The second team foul. And we take a look at just how, here's a matchup. Charlotte Smith against Rebecca fighting over the top. The key with Rebecca is not to let her catch the ball because she's very effective wherever she is when she catches it. They've done a good job on her so far. This is Crawley, the senior off glass. Did she call that one? Off glass. Crawley with the basket. Well, she sort of had to put on the uh, radar for that because Kara Walters had a hand right in her face. Probably know more for her defense than her offensive output. But she's a senior, and she does not want this to be her last game. Walters with her second foul of the game. And we take a look at it. There she was shielding her vision, so maybe that's why it was a bank shot. Officials called her for the foul. Charlie, just over a 61% free throw shooter on the year. And she puts Carolina up by four. 16 minutes left to go in the first half. And Rebecca Lobo is going to be called for, I believe, an elbow. And that is the call. To be very frustrated, maybe? I think a little bit frustrated. I think North Carolina right now is being very physical. Rebecca's trying to get position, and there's the call right there. And so it's Carolina's ball with a four-point lead. The combination of Crawley and Smith is really causing some difficulties, and that's going to go the other way. Carolina on a 7-0 run, but Crawley is now called for the foul, trying to get position underneath. And Robin, if this is any indication oh boy. of the physical <laughs> play that we're going to have, we're going to be in for a, a big battle. That is Crawley's second foul. She will go out, and Carrie McKee, the junior, 6'2 junior, will come in for Sylvia Hatchell's team. Down low to Baruby, who's in for the first time. And Carla Baruby does a good job down low for Gino Ariema. In the semi, she had 20 points, 8 rebounds, just about a career game for her when they needed it most against Southern Miss. And Connecticut fall back into the 2-3 zone. It's going to be a backcourt violation, or... No, it's not. It was picked by Connecticut player, I guess. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Carolina's got to get up in a hurry. Four, three, she doesn't realize. Puts it up. Smith just had to take it off. But a little confusion there. And boy, whew, stay with us, everyone. Jones with the steal and the basket. Well, Robin, we touched upon how quick she is, but if you want to talk pure speed, she is a world-class sprinter. Came in fourth in the 200 meters, 1992 U.S. Olympic trial. Clocked at 22.5 a a national high school record. Baruby will take it to the goal. Looking underneath for Elliott, who's tied up. Weber gets the shooter's roll. She was 0 for 2 against old uh, Southern Mississippi, so that's a good sign for Karen Weber. Now the guards are starting to get a little bit more involved. Still a two-point lead for North Carolina. Jones cutting, slashing, but it's too hard. Elliott with the rebound. Out to Rosati. Rosani also will go hard to the goal. Carla Ruby. She had 20 points and 8 rebounds against Southern Mississippi on Thursday night. And there's the Big East all-rookie team. We're tied at 15 all. Gary McKee down low. Can't get it to go. Lobo with the rebound. Rosati again going hard to the goal, using her body, but to no avail, and it's out to Samson, who gives it up. 
to Stephanie Lawrence. The basket and the foul. For Ruby Cal called on the foul. Great transition, fast break points for North Carolina. They love to get out in front, especially off of a turnover or off of a miss. Crawley is coming back in. Here's Jen Rosati, a little bit out of control on the offensive end. There's the board, Tanya Sampson, quickness and speed personified, gives it to Lawrence, and Barubi, yes, she slid underneath after Lawrence left her feet. And Lawrence will go to the line, can't get it to go, and Lobo comes down with it but loses it, and it's North Carolina's ball. Fans don't care too much for that call. North Carolina 7 for 13 to open up the first half. UConn 7 for 11. And Lobo still shut out. But she's doing a good job on the boards and rebounding. Well, the great players will do more than just score, and then they'll get back into the storm because they definitely need her to get her points. Probably back in early, hard off the back of the rim, and Rosati with the rebound. Connecticut's more of an opportunistic fast-breaking team. They will take it when they have it. But they're not the type of athletes that will just be able to streak. Oh, great pass from Lobo to Elliott. Correcto, correcto Lobo chastised some time by Coach Oyama for being a little too unselfish. But she said, you know, when I make the pass, that's the play I feel is necessary. It's crawling inside the paint. She gets it to go. Carolina, back up by two. Her fifth point. Senior co-captain Sylvia Crawley playing with two personal fouls but taking it aggressively on the offense. And Weber being challenged by Marion Jones and she knocks it out of bounds so it'll be North Carolina's ball. Of course, this is the first of the Richmond. Both these teams are going to use the tournament play. And Lobo again, call for the foul, her second. Gina Oriema, a little bit concerned, but he's been in this position before. He's going to send in Kara Walters for Lobo, have her sit down with two fouls. And remember, Walters also has two fouls. That could be very interesting for Connecticut if their big players pick up a third. Crawley can't get it to go. It's Smith with the rebound. She tries to go up, and she is fouled. That is going to be Kara Walters' third personal foul. No, I think that was called against Jamel Elliott. You're correct. Well, it is Elliott. Yep. But now she has two fouls. So it's Elliott, Lobo, and Walters all with two fouls, and we're at the 12-minute point of the first half. And Coach Oriana does not have good bench strength. This year, he's gone most of the way with Lobo and Walters on the inside. Smith connects on her first one. She's almost a 70% free throw shooter. Here is how Connecticut has gotten to this point, defeating Brown. That was a scrappy game, but they pulled it out by 19, defeating Auburn and then Southern Miss on Thursday. And Smith misses her second. A scramble for the ball. It's kicked by Stephanie Lawrence, so it'll be Connecticut's ball. And Stephanie saying her teammates, yes, in fact, I did kick it, I did. Honest type girl right there. Finally a player that admits something, not hiding from it. Robin, you never made a personal foul, did you? No, no never, never mind. Never, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Now Nancy Weaver was fine. That's another story, don't you know? Uh, but she won't admit it either, no. though. Tanya Boom can't get it to go from the outside. She's in the only senior for the Connecticut Huskies. It's Carolina up by three. We're coming. Coach Hatchell said her balance and her bench has been really what got them here. Jones for three. Not close. Sampson is there for the putback. Well, she must have just realized that we did that, crap. Of course. Said, you know, i got to get, get more points today. I always know that. Contribute. He's not keeping the dribble alive. Out top. The question is, without Lobo on the floor, who's going to be the Connecticut player that's going to rise to the occasion to step up their game and take control? Connecticut a little bit out of sync. And Samson can play some tough defense. Carolina, period, plays some tough defense on the perimeter, perimeter and down and inside with Crawley. Well, you see a little bit of mismatch. Now, Sylvia right. Crawley with two personal fouls. They don't want to pick up a third. So, Marion Jones, the world-class sprinter, 
has a little tall pass to guard 6-7. Oh, there she is. And Lobo is back in, and Marion Jones, not only is she a speedster, but she can get up also. Lobo has not scored, but she's back in the game with two personal fouls. Rebecca will take the three if she has it. Call for traveling. And she is another one that just seems to be a little out of sync, but she is hustling in other areas. That's Connecticut's sixth in turnover, only two for North Carolina. Coach Oriama guided his team to the Big East Championship just as Sylvia Hatchell got in North Carolina. They also won the ACC in a great match against Virginia. Two conference championships. And here you see the points off of turnovers. Carolina with nine, Connecticut with four. Sampson underneath her own goal. Can't hang on to it, so it is Connecticut's ball. Connecticut down by five, just over 11 minutes to go. And Sylvia Hatchell said, that's okay. It's okay. We've got a lot of time left. They've really come on the last three years in North Carolina Tar Heels. Connecticut still finding a way to, looking for a way to crack this North Carolina defense. Good pass by Elliott, but Barubi couldn't hang on to it, but it will remain Connecticut's ball. There's the freshman, Carl Barubi, out of Oxford, Mass. You see the contribution that they have made. Carl Barubi, 11.3 points. Carl Walker, 10.7. But look at the field goal percentage for Barubi. And 74 blocks for both, Carol Walker. Yeah, both the East All-Rookie team members have a foul underneath. Going to go against Jamel Elliott. And that is her third foul. And that also is 17 fouls against Connecticut. It puts North Carolina on the line in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Carolina only has two team fouls. Jamel Elliott is a little bit underrated to me. She's an excellent player. She's a real a role player. She'll go underneath, get those little chip baskets, and she is very important for the Connecticut Huskies. Robin, she's been mentioned many times as the heart and soul of this team. Smith connects on her first free throw. Her fourth point. We mentioned Charlotte Smith in the Old Dominion game in the second round of the NCAA was ejected for being involved in an altercation with 40 seconds remaining in the game, so she had to sit out the Vanderbilt game. And she admitted that that was a stupid thing on her part to be a part of. She's just very thankful that her teammates gave yes. her the chance to finish out or continue her career. Carolina enjoying their largest lead. Seven points and Samson with the steal and all alone for the easy layup. My goodness, now they're up by nine, their largest lead of the game. And that's great anticipation, and you saw the explosiveness in Tanya Sampson's step. Her seventh point of the game already. North Carolina's done a good job of keeping the crowd out of this game. Lobo loses it to Marion Jones, and the speedster can't quite hang on to it, but Sampson is there. And the ball is knocked out. It is Connecticut's ball. And you can see the speed and quickness of North Carolina. They seem very hungry. They're every loose ball. They're after it. And Connecticut, conversely, seems a little bit timid. A little bit tentative as well. On, the, on your passes, when you have players as quick as this, you have to be sure and fire that pass in there. You cannot be tentative at all. And you have to really take care of that basketball. Rebecca Lobo has not gotten the ball where she is most effective, which is in the paint area. Carolina on a 9 run the last two and a half minutes. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. The Ruby with the ball. Five seconds left on the shot clock and it is Crawley called with the foul and that is her third foul of the game and she is a little foul prone, has been throughout her career. But for Carolina they have the bench and they have the depth that they can come off with some real top-notch quality players. So Crawley will go out, in will come Tanya Jackson. She has worked very hard. She has really progressed as the season has gone along for Sylvia Hatchell. Down goes Crawley. And that's a fresh 30 on the clock for Connecticut. Rebecca Lobo, her first basket of the day. And that's where Rebecca is most effective. Off the dribble in the paint, she loves to go away from the defense. She'll go left or right. Samson has it tied up, but gets it back. And it is 
Smith slashing through, but she's denied, and Lobo with the rebound. Tanya Boone will be called for traveling. You know, Robin, we were talking before the game and watching the two teams warming, warming up, and Carolina seemed very loose, and they were laughing, and they were joking around, and Connecticut really was trying to zone and concentrate. They had their game faces on, but you felt that perhaps they were a little uh, hesitant and a little bit nervous. But North Carolina was definitely very loose. Here's Sampson on the baseline. Rosati with the rebound. Out to Boone. For the senior, Tanya Boone, her first basket of the day. So Tanya was sitting on the bench as a medical red shirt during that Final Four season in 1991. She says playing is a lot more fun. <laughs> there we have Cooper, excuse me, Jackson with the basket. <laughs> Elliot calling for the ball down low. Well, you see that great denial. By Jackson. But the Ruby sneaks through. All of a sudden, it seems like Connecticut is starting to get a little bit more into their offensive flow. They're working the ball around and finding some seams on the inside. They're back within five. That is Jackson with the left. It can't get it to go. The Ruby bringing it up to Connecticut. Oh, oh. Marion Jones, look at the speech to go. She is faster with the ball dribbling than most people are without it. Just amazing. Carla Berube held it out just a little bit, saw that Rawlings on it, and swat, it was gone. Marion Jones, seventh point of the game. Elliott with a clear shot into Berube. It's blocked by Sampson, but she's called for the foul. Her first foul of the game. Tanya Sampson, you just see the strength. I mean, she is probably one of the strongest women's basketball players I have seen. And Barubi will go to the line. 69.5% free throw shooter. A Dean's List student, and you'll see that a lot with Connecticut players. Gino Ariema has done a good job of making sure that every freshman that he has recruited has gone on to earn her undergraduate degree there in Stores, Connecticut. Actually, six of 12 players on the squad that have attained Dean's List status for the fall semester. Rebecca Lobo, outstanding in political science. And Ruby with two key free throws to get it back to within five, her eighth point of the game. And you see the speedster, Marion Jones. We'll have her in a lot more when we come back. If you love the ball, is back in the game for Connecticut. Smith with the ball, trying to work on Walters, who has two fouls. And that is Stephanie Lawrence. For the rebound, Smith comes down with it. Jones again. Great defense by Connecticut. Well, the number one defense in the nation, holding teams to 33.4 percent, is starting to pick up their pace. Ruby wanting to go inside. She does to Walters, and she hits on the baseline. The baseline hook shot. Pat Walters has exceeded everybody's ex expectations this season. It's a three-point lead for Carolina. Smith can't hang on to it, but gets it out. No! The Ruby picks it up for Connecticut. And for Connecticut, rather than has been their defense that has got him here all season. They have to go back to that. It is Jones bringing it up for Carolina. Stephanie Warren. No, the Ruby is there. Four times, North Carolina has not gotten second chance point opportunity. Connecticut doing a good job on the board. Six minutes to go. North Carolina up by three, 30 to 27. Oh, I can find Walker down low. Her ninth point of the game. And for North Carolina, they have Tanya Sampson, their leader, waiting to come in. I think they want her in the game as soon as they can get her in there. A little disheveled right now for Carolina. Smith, a little out of control. Tanya Jackson with it, but it is Rosati. It's a steal. And taking the layup, but Barubi is there for the putback. Oh, Connecticut in the lead, 31 to 30. And all of a sudden, these fans are now on their feet. They have 
something to cheer about. And Carolina didn't want the crowd to get back in it, but they are. That is Smith. Going to quiet the crowd, but Karubi with the rebound. A scramble for the ball. And you can attribute a lot of this to the intense play of Jen Rosati, number 21. She has stepped up her game. She's swarming. She's now getting a nice little vest from Coach Oriyama. Here you see, she's trying to get after the ball and sneaks inside. She is determined. She has been relentless in the possession arrow in favor of Connecticut. And follow the play. There's the follow-up. Rosati taking a much-deserved rest. A 14-4 run, four minutes and some change, and Lobo steps out of bounds. It's Connecticut, excuse me, North Carolina's ball. They're down by one, a position they haven't been in since very early in the game. The 11th turnover for Connecticut. Sampson will put it up on the baseline, can't get the roll. Walters with the rebound. But Sampson has been sitting on the bench for a few minutes, a little bit cold. Walters down low to Lobo. And Connecticut is going to open a three-point lead now with just over four minutes to go. That's just her fourth point of the game, but she is contributing in other ways. And Connecticut going into 2-3 zone now, anticipating some North Carolina passes. That's what Barubi did over to Webber, who can't hang on to it. A uh, costly mistake for Connecticut. It's going to be Carolina's ball. Well, they haven't had many easy opportunities in transition. In one of them, they let that one get away. Lori Gear coming in for North Carolina. As we take a look, Connecticut with 12 costly turnovers. North Carolina not doing much better protecting the ball with eight. Also, we have Gwendolyn Gillingham. We expected to have a Gillingham in this ball game, but we thought it would be her older sister, Heidi, from Vanderbilt, but they were upset by Gwendolyn's team. Heidi, of course, the tallest player in the country at 6'10". There she is on the right of your screen. With her brother and her mother. Mom. Of course, when they played each other, her mother was wearing two buttons, one of Heidi and one of Gwendolyn. And there's Gwendolyn taking the shot early, Samson with the putback, and it goes. Well, there's the leader of this team, the go-to player. She scored out of those last 11 points against Vanderbilt, the last five. She's a big-time player. Weber going hard to the goal, gives it up to Walters down low, and she's called for traveling. a little bit of momentum switching back to North Carolina. It's a one-point lead for Connecticut, and Gino Ariema will be back with a lot more, so stay with us. Don't forget, at halftime, we'll go back to the studio. Chris Fowler, Nancy Lieberman Klein will preview the other regional finals coming up tonight on ESPN. It's Smith down low and gets it to go. She's such a smooth player. She was the MVP in the ACC tournament, playing some of her best basketball right now. Carolina up by one. Lobo will take it from the outside. Too hard off the back of the rim, but Baruby controls the rebound. 43 of uh, 29 of Connecticut's 33 points have come by the front court. Wendelin, Gillingham controlling things for Connecticut. Excuse me, North Carolina, and it's off to Sampson, who quickly gets it down to Lawrence the side of the backboard. You can uh, count some of that to Rebecca Lobo coming yeah. flying in the air to her face. Kim better in the game now for Rosati back in. And hits a big three for Connecticut. Well, Rosati is up to the challenge. She's rising to the occasion. Her fifth point of the game. It's Connecticut back up by two. Two and a half minutes left to go in the first half. And Connecticut going back to that zone for one reason to keep their players a little bit out of foul trouble. They both have two, Walters and Lobo. Samson tried for three, but it didn't go. Here's Barubi, excuse me, Rosati. Off to Lobo, who will take the three. Connecticut will set it back up. Now Lobo down underneath, and a beautiful pass again to Walters, but can't get the layup. Here's Smith. Three on two. Lawrence from the outside. No. McKee down underneath. I don't know how she even saw the top of her nose between those four Connecticut players. I'm sorry, that was Lloyd Gear and that Smith going hard to the basket. Hard 
coming right around the outstretched arms of Carol Walters. Her ninth point, it's 36 all. Tim Vedder, number five, normally a defensive specialist. But she's second on the team in steals despite being eighth in minutes play. Doesn't see much playing time, but she maximizes the time that she's in. She does. She's really a good role player. She's not inclined to make a lot of mistakes. Again, at halftime, Chris Fowler and Nancy Lieberman-Klein will preview the other women's regional finals. We'll also analyze the first half. Anything that we may have missed, Sherry, I, I see, will bring to our attention the former star at Old Dominion, the only two-time Wade Trophy winner. Down low to Walters. And a block by Gillingham. Six seven against the six seven. Gwendolyn Gillingham, not usually a, a star player, averages about nine minutes per game. She's playing very well right now. Here is Lawrence for three. Gillingham trying for the rebound, but Lawrence controls it. And she'll put it up again. She is determined to hit that three. I think she's three of their last shots from the behind there and have missed all three. This is Carol Walters, a good look by Jim Rosati to get the ball down low to Carol Walters, her 11th point of the game. Connecticut up by two, under a minute to go in the first half. I think you want to go to your strengths if you're North Carolina. Smith or Sampson, it's going to be its turn. Ooh. May have spoken a wee bit soon. I did like speak a it was going to be a charge, but Jim Rosati called for blocking. No, no, no. It is a charge. We're a little bit confused right now. He has reversed his call. Jen Rosati kind of shaking out her wrist. Looks like she fell hard on that. It does. That right wrist. It is Connecticut's ball with a two-point lead. 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Ruby going hard, and Gillingham called for blocking. Carolina has played a very good half. They only have 16 fouls. This is the first time Connecticut will go to the line, actually be two shots for Barubi. You see the problems that they've had in the front court, 73 points. The bulk of their scoring coming from the front court, only five from the back court, and the victory over Southern Mississippi. You see today, much of the same, Sherry. Well, that's the way it's been for them all season, but when you have an All-American player in Rebecca Lobo, who's going to sit out the last 28 seconds, and a 6'7 freshman who has come on the way she has is Carl Walters, who wants to get the ball in their hands. Sure. But the guards definitely need to hit some of those shots, as Rosati has just a up the defense so that they're not packing it in. No secret that the front court players, even Gino Ariema will say, their better players are in the front court. Baruby nails the second free throw. Her 11 point. Not much time left. Gear controlling it. Trying to get underneath, but it's Baruby controlling it for Connecticut. You see the time remaining. Into Walters. Can't get the baseline shot to go. Gear with the rebound. Trying to score, Marion Jones. And it's going to be off of Sampson's foot. And Connecticut's ball with a three-point lead and four ticks left in the first half clock. Robin, if you gave Marion wow. Jones the ball with about three seconds left, she could get from baseline to baseline. My goodness. Fast and furious here in the first half. Rebecca Lobo has been shut out pretty much offensively on the boards and in her fists. She's her All-America self. There's Boone to Lobo. Blocked by Smith. And our score at halftime, Connecticut has fought back to take a three-point lead. 39-36, Connecticut in the lead. I know you don't want to miss the second half, anybody, and you don't want to miss Chris Bass and Nancy Lieberman-Klein in the studio. And look to her more often. And no. we'll start the second half with the ball. Crawling back in, played by foul trouble in the first half as well. Smith quickly going for the basket. See how important Smith is to this team. That's her 11 point.
Rebecca Lobo. Not the shot she wanted. Walters with the rebound. Back out to Rosati for three. And she hits it. Little outside action for Rosati. That's her second three of the game. That opens it up a little bit, because now the defense is going to have to come out. Hand in her face. A four-point lead for Connecticut. Crawley down inside, challenged by Walters, but she gets it to go. But you see the game plan by Coach Hatchell. Get the ball inside. They, I think they got away from it a little bit when Lawrence was putting up all those threes and missing. Now they're going back inside to Crawley and Smith. It's Rosati, Walters, Weber, Elliott, and Lobo right there to the starting five in the second half. And Lobo gets it to go. Going strong to the basket. That's her sixth point. Becca Lobo with 19 double doubles this year. She finds ways to score from all over the floor. Jones down to Smith. Smith and Jones. Sylvia Hatchell has really come on for North Carolina the last three years. Has really built a strong program. Of course, the men's team gets a lot of attention, but they have a strong following as well and, and deserve it so. Well, actually, it was Charlotte Smith yesterday who said she's going to go back to campus. And uh, that was Sylvia Crawley who's coming up with a little bit of a limp on that play. She has her left knee bandaged. But she's a senior. She's going to hang tough. The two-point lead for Connecticut. Walter baseline. Sweet shot. Robin, this is a very important part of the game right after the halftime because both teams have made adjustments. They're trying to execute it, and they're both doing a good job at it. Later on, we're going to see some more time for adjustments. Again, Crawley challenging Walters and can't quite get it to go down. Weber with the ball for Connecticut. Weber being guarded closely by Jones. Rosati with the head fake. Down low to Walters. Get it to her. Get it to the freshman right now. Caroline having a difficult time finding her and moving her out of where she wants to score. She has 15 points. Crawley. But it's Rosati with the rebound. Five points over Carol Walters' average. Was in the semis against Southern Miss. She had 14 points, five rebounds in just 17 minutes. Now Elliott's been a bit quiet, played by foul trouble. Lobo looking down, challenging. And she picks up the foul for North Carolina. Coming up, 1 o'clock Monday, it's the Women's Division II Championship. Cal State San Bernardino going up against North Dakota State. All the action begins 1 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Championship basketball continues here on ESPN. Lobo will go to the line. It's Tanya Boone coming back in. She saw limited action in the first half. Out goes Pam Weber. As I was mentioning, that was Charlotte Smith's second personal foul, but she said in the press conference yesterday that she was going to go back to campus with a big smile on her face. The uh, Sadly enough for them, the men's team uh, is not advanced as far as the women's team this year. She was having fun with that. They respect each other, as the UConn men and women respect one another, and the Connecticut men, the disappointing loss last night to Florida. In fact, the only now men's and women's duo still remaining is Purdue. And Lobo can the second free throw. It's a seven-point lead for UConn. 17 minutes left to go in the ballgame. Play of action left ahead. Tanya Boone hanging out in the paint there, trying to help out. Samson nails the three-pointer. Samson in double figures. 12 points for Samson. North Carolina has missed their last 10 three-point attempts. Up until that point, Samson controlling the break. Oh! <laughs> Big time play. Maybe she carried the ball, but no. Big time play. Connecticut by two. I think Connecticut next time down the floor on the defense may want to go back to that 2-3 zone. Carolina in their man to man defense. Rosati puts it up. Elliott can't handle the rebound. But it stays Connecticut's ball. 
We talked about Sampson. In fact, she has the all-time leading scorer in North Carolina history, 2,076 points. Here's a reason why she's just so athletic. She kicks her moment in between a couple of defenders for the scoop. She leads several statistical categories at North Carolina. Too numerous to name. Tanya Boone out top. giving her a clear lane to the goal. It's Elliott with the putback. Big basket. Janelle Elliott. Elliott has been very quiet. You saw her get like first couple points early on. That's her sixth point of the game. She is like that third factor on your knees. Yeah, she got in foul trouble early and that kind of quieted her a little bit. Crawley has been very active in the second half. Kicks it back out to Sanson for two. And it just draws iron barely a little bit. Lobo with another rebound. She's hearing it from the Husky fans. Lobo call for traveling. Rebecca Lobo did not like that call. Had a big resounding no. Gino doesn't like that call either. And she's been called for traveling a couple times like that today. We'll take a look at it. I'll see if you can see her, her feet, right? There's her pivot. Uh, yes. Happy Very slight. Slight. Lifted her pivot foot before she put the ball on the floor. Also slightly, but that's all that was necessary. It's a four-point lead for Connecticut. 51-47. Stay with us. The NBA handle pass. No, she'll stay around for one more year. Smith, baseline move. And Rosati looks like she took a shot to the midsection. Hopefully she just had the wind knocked out of her. Walking for a rebounding position. In a bit of pain as the trainer comes out right in the stomach. That's what she's saying. As you know, you, you played it for Connecticut. And you see both teams getting yeah. it, firing it up. 67%, 63% for Connecticut. Barubian as well. Sampson just takes it from Barubian. Well, that's a little going to school there. The senior against the freshman exactly. at the second time, rather, exactly. that's happened during the game. And folks, we're tied once again, 51 all. We had eight lead changes in the first half, four ties in the first half. We have a tie again here in the second half. 14 and a half to go. But Ruby thinks about it. Can't get it to go. Falling with the rebound, Alfie Jones. Quickly, for Lawrence, who's going to take the three. Ball. And she is in pain. We talked about the athleticism, the quickness, and the strength of Tanya Sampson. Carla Barubi, a freshman, exposing the leather. Tanya Sampson knows exactly what to do with it. Yes, she does. She is a seasoned veteran, as is Sylvia Crawley, who seems to be all right. She's staying in the ball game. It's Carolina's baller with her own goal. <laughs> It looks like uh, Tanya Sampson called a timeout. They want to think about it at 51 all, 14.09 left to go in the ball game, and Sampson going to the sideline seems to be a little injured herself. Oh boy, folks, <laughs> a little bit of everything here. We'll be back. Rosati is back in. We knew she would be. Oh, yeah. Took a little shot in the midsection, but has come back to the foul trouble. Crawley with three, Lobo and Elliott each with three for Connecticut. There's Smith. Make it 11 to run. Uh, we had a chance to talk with Charlotte Smith earlier. We asked her what her vertical leap was. She said, oh, about 28 inches. Oh, so. <laughs> her sixth point of the second half, 15th overall. Of course, I didn't want to tell her what mine was. I didn't want to, you know, embarrass her. <laughs> but she had 22 points. I'm at least 2,200 points. 2,200 points. Excuse me, 22. But I'm at least in the double figures in the vertical. There you go. There you go. Off the hands of Connecticut, it will be Carolina's ball. You know, 
but none too happy about that. Well, it was a good idea. Pam Weber was trying to go back door, and Coach Oriama said, keep going, keep going, because she hesitated for a second, and Rebecca Lobo passed her the ball. Finishing one to right, Connecticut's 18th turnover. Samson will take the three. Oh, my. Play with a lot of confidence right now. Well, that little low when Jen Rosati went out, they lost, Connecticut lost some intensity. Carolina's starting to heat it up, going to really like a, a three, two zone here, making it difficult for the guards. And Vanderbilt had a lot of trouble with that zone, but not Janelle Elliott. She didn't have any trouble finding a seam. But with the zone, you have to move the defense around with a good perimeter passes. That's what Connecticut did that time. Marion Jones controlling the offense for Carolina. And Samson is going to be called with the foul of Rosati. Philly pretty happy about that considering what happened earlier. Now three point lead for Carolina. Mel Elliott gets a little break. Carol Walters in. You see Connecticut, 18 turnovers. North Carolina, just 11. And that's the big difference right there. North Carolina, 24 points in the transition. Rosati finding Lobo. He does a strong move to the basket. Nice little bounce pass assist there for Jen Rosati. Done an excellent job of finding open teammates. And at this point, Connecticut falls back into their 2 3 zone. It's been very effective. It was effective early in the first half. Smith out to Jones. Again, it warns for three. But Carolina controls it. Smith can't get it. Samson down low. Glasses, North Carolina, that is Samson's 21st point. Well, she is the one player you must find. You must move her out of rebounding position. And that's not easy to do. Yeah, it is not easy to do. Weber, down to Walters. And it's Samson getting a hand on it. The Ruby is called for knocking it out, so it'll be Carolina's ball. And Tanya Samson is doing it on both ends of the floor, defensively. And offensively, she has just taken over this game. This Carol Walters at 6'7 can see over the trap. But Tanya Sampson getting in the passing lane. It's a three-point lead for Carolina. And Smith is called for traveling. Connecticut ball. What a turnaround that these seniors, Tanya Sampson and Sylvia Qualley, has done for this North Carolina program. Speaking of seniors, Tanya Boone coming in for Connecticut as Pam Weber takes a seat. Sylvia Hatchell's career in eighth year, 139 wins and just 70, 96 losses. 411 overall victories in her coaching career in 19 years. That's Lobo not even looking at the basket. And there is three-second violation called on Jamel Elliott. Jamel kind of parked out there waiting for a weak side rebound or somebody to look at her. But Connecticut was working the ball outside. Oh, look at that stare. Give me a break, said the ref. Give me a break. Just over 11 minutes to go. 58-55 North Carolina. A trip to the final four on the line. Samson. Jones is there. Can't get it to go. Samson. She ran into him yeah. pretty hard. Ooh, what are you doing there? You know, she's really a fun-loving person. Uh, talking to Sylvia Hatchell and other members, they said she's happy-go-lucky. She's a, the, the team cut up. She is very intense when she plays, but she is the real soul of the North Carolina Tar Heels. <laughs> oh! What'd you do that for, ref? What were you doing there? One, two, three! You would never know it. And her demeanor on the court. Right. Ellie, oh! Smith is charged with a blocking foul, but Elliot put a little bit of an elbow up there to protect herself, but nonetheless, the foul is charged to Charlotte Smith. Well, Connecticut over the top of the zone here, finds Jamel underneath. That's where she was last time, and I guess Charlotte Smith came in just a hair late. Just a bit. That is her third foul. As well as the team third, Connecticut much better with the fouls in this half, just two for the team. Boone will inbound, looking for Lobo, but she's not open. Out to 
Raiders got it. Once again, look at that matchup inside Crawley and Lobo. Crawley trying to deny getting spun. Lobo working it down low. Well, there are a couple of reasons right there why Rebecca Lobo is Big East Player of the Year as well as an All-American this year. Only four points in the first half, but seven in the second. She has 11 points today. 11 points in the field. Crawley and Lobo with the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds, but it's going to stay Connecticut's ball. Rebecca Lobo has done it all. Look at that. Real difference in the front court and the back court for these two players, two teams. They have different strengths, no doubt about it. Yep, we talked about the differences, and That's who, who's going to execute and who's going to actually utilize their strengths is who's going to win this game. We're at the 10-minute mark, 58-57, North Carolina. Thank you, Lobo. Double team. Double team. Shot clock down to four. Three, two, one. Got it off. I thought she got it off for the buzzer. The official said no. She hit the backboard through no iron, so it will be North Carolina's ball when we come back. 58-57. North Carolina in the lead here at the East Regional Final. Again, a trip to Richmond, and the finest of the Final Four will be much younger than that 1991 squad. It's a one-point lead for North Carolina trying to make it to their first. Final four appearance. And out of the timeout, Connecticut switching to a man to man defense here. Big mismatch with Tanya, Tanya Sampson against uh, Jen Rosati. And we saw it right there. Has 23 points. Tanya Boone. Rebecca Lobo has called for traveling again. She is having a tough time on the offensive end. It's a three-point lead for North Carolina. Nine minutes to go in the ball game. Crawley. North Carolina trying to pick apart the defense. There's a mismatch again. Shot clock. Seven six seconds on the shot clock. go on the shot clock. They got the inside shot they wanted. Carolina, very cool. They take their moment. Connecticut right now, you get a sense that the intensity has dropped a bit. Marion Jones with the drive. You see the shot clock lower left. In fact, gets it off a little bit of a push from Carla Baruby. And just a moment ago, we talked about the mismatch here. China Santa with a little quick fake and a jab step. Too easy. I think Connecticut is more effective in their zone. I don't think they match up well against the strength and the quickness of these Carolina guards. Crawley with a free throw, giving them a six-point lead, they being North Carolina. Down low to Walters, and it's blocked by Crawley. Janelle Elliott down underneath, gets it back out. She's out of bounds, so it's going to be North Carolina's ball. And right now, it's momentum definitely favoring North Carolina. Six-point lead. Connecticut has to come up with a good defensive stop. Connecticut with eight turnovers in the second half. North Carolina, only one. There is Sampson. But Rebecca Lobo has the rebound. Off to Rosati. A key possession for Connecticut. And Lobo going hard to the goal. And she is fast. So if you notice, Rebecca Lobo with that nose brace, she had her nose broken in the semifinals of the Big East Championship, had it set that night, came back the next game to play in the championship, and she has played fantastic ever since. You see determination, she had it in her mind. She was driving to the basket. The fourth foul for Crawley. Take a look at this, just sheer determination, and Sylvia Crawley stepped in. That is her fourth personal. The presence of mind to go for the shot. Rebecca Lobo with that uh, mask. They affectionately call her Hannibal Lester. Pilots yeah. of the land, you remember that mask that he had on? Uncharacteristic for Rebecca to miss foul shot. 
One about for three. 75%. Yeah. She's one for three from the line. Anthony Hopkins, you know, one of the Academy Awards. Yeah. Rebecca Lobo deserves, and has received awards all year long for her performance. And, uh, she'll still probably receive a few more. Oh, boy, that is unfantastic for her to miss both free throws like that. Six-point lead for North Carolina. Eight minutes to go. Sampson! Smith with the rebound. A lot of contact. The possession arrow in favor of Connecticut. And Robin, what is interesting is if you notice, double zero, Sylvia Crawley is still in the game right now. 7.55 left, playing with four personal fouls. Obviously, Coach Sylvia Hatchell has the confidence in her that she is not going to pick up that fifth foul. You have to think if you're Connecticut, you want to take it to her. You certainly do. Walters, a great feed again from Lobo. It's a four-point lead now for Carolina. And Rebecca Lobo knows if she doesn't have the shot, that she has her 6'7 friend, freshman, waiting underneath. Who has 17 points. Marion Jones. A big three-pointer for North Carolina. Huge three for Marion Jones. Seven-point lead. She was a five-time ACC Rookie of the Week this year. Rebecca Lobo. Get it to go, and Jamel Elliott picks up the rebound, but can't hang on to it. And Not going away. They are going to stay right in with this, going to their strength. And there's that unselfish play again from Rebecca, giving up to, Rebe to Lobo. Excuse me, Walters, but she comes back with a big block. Trailing the play, and comes up with a big block. But again, earlier you saw they're trying. Maybe that time she should have taken the shot herself but she tries to pass it to Walter. Yep, so therefore she comes down defensively, her first block of the game. She's the number one Big East block. It's a Big East with 162. Great timing, great anticipation. And on the inbound pass, Jones is called for the foul. So it'll be Connecticut's ball. They're down by seven. 6.42 left to go. Marion Jones with her first foul of the game. Coach Ariama talking with Rebecca Lobo now, probably telling her, you know, when you have the ball in the paint, <laughs> shoot, shoot it. You shoot 55% from the floor, you have a better chance of making it. As you said yesterday, right. completing the assist. Down low to Lobo. This time she's going to shoot it, but it's short, and Walters is there. Well, she attracted the defense, had three blue jerseys around her. It left Kara Walters open for the rebound. She has 19 points at the 5 4 lead for Carolina. Smith will put up the three. Can't get it to go. Crawley is there for the putback, but can't get the rebound. And the Ruby comes away with it. Crawley got good position, but then to go back up. Off the offensive rebound. Had it stripped from her. Rosati going hard. Diving is Janelle who loses control and got to play there by Crawley, who yes. has four fouls. I mean, that wow. That look from our vantage point that that was Whew. on the wrist. You don't want to do that with four fouls and still 550 left to go. 131 blocks this season, a season, single season record for Rebecca Lobo. Looking underneath. And Baruby is called for the offensive foul. It's going to be North Carolina's ball. That's yep. her third foul for Baruby. Well, she was fighting for position. Looks like she might have cleared out a little bit with her right elbow. After 11 points in the first half, Baruby has been shut out in the second half. There's a big story. 24 turnovers for Connecticut. They only average just under 19, so already too many for them. Rebecca Lobo, a key defensive play, and she's tied up by Crawley. Possession arrow to North Carolina. That could be a factor down the stretch. That little red arrow right there. On oh, Sylvia Crawley being very aggressive on I both ends her. of the floor. She was very loose before the game. We were standing around courtside. She came up to me and said, I'm a speech communication major. I'm looking for a job. Can I give you a call? And I'm like, you're about to play a big game, Sylvia. <laughs> but she was very loose, and I'll be happy to help her take my job. Just another athlete wanted to take my job. They're probably lined up there, Robin. <laughs> Look at that bench. A little intense weather, boom. The blue there is associate head coach Chris Daly, who is really the, the organizer of uh, Coach Oriema. And yes, played for Rutgers. She played in, oh, Samson with a big three-pointer. So cool. Eight-point lead, her 
26 points. She is the story. She played big as a senior. She was big in the win over Vanderbilt as well. Connecticut cannot let the lead increase. They need to come up with a basket here. Lobo has a strip from her. North Carolina went to the zone. They're starting to pack it in. They're going to make Connecticut win it. If they do, the guard's going to come up there. And again, it was effective against Vanderbilt. They went to the zone, and Vanderbilt wasn't aggressive enough. This woman is aggressive, but can't get it to go. The three-pointer from Samson is out to Rosati. So an eight-point lead for Carolina. To Ruby. Excuse me. Yep, to Rosati. They needed that one. They did, and if you notice that time, Sylvia Pauly had to back off and allow Rosati to go into the layup. No contact there. Rosati now in double figures with 10. With a six-point lead for North Carolina. 4.23 left to go in the game. Now it's up to your defense. Oh, no. Well, well, there's a lock there. Definitely. Let Smith get in down low. Very smart play for North Carolina. Working the ball around, finding the seam. And understandably so, Connecticut wants to take a timeout and think about it. It's an eight-point lead. Come back with us, everyone. You will just over four minutes to go, but another turnover for Connecticut. It's Samson leading the play, pulls up, hits the front of the iron, and Rosati comes away with it. Oh, Samson just won't give up. Well, she, I think she feels that she has the advantage, and she's trying to take care of that. Time running out for Connecticut. Now, Mona Walters. Oh, she has been big for high, Connecticut. Yes, and high low with a 6 4 6 7 goal up to the set. 21 points for the big freshman. Well, now it's up to the defense. Got to come up with a stop. You can't continue to trade baskets if you're Connecticut. Nope, they're down by six, Connecticut is. A foul away from the ball. And it looks like that's going to be against Sylvia Crawley. No. Who's it on? Marion Jones, number 20. Just her second foul. Team six, though, one more, and it puts Connecticut in a one-on-one -on -one situation, whereas Connecticut just has 14 fouls. They have three to give. A big possession here for Connecticut, down by six. They seem a little bit tentative. Oh. Scramble underneath the ball, and it's going to be North Carolina's ball. Another turnover for Connecticut. Oh, boy, that's been the difference with Gino Ariana's team. 27 turnovers. Very hard to win that way. But yet, they're only down by six. Under two minutes to go. Excuse me, under three minutes to go. A key key, a steal by Carla Berube. This is where the experienced teams take over. When you're young, you're a little bit hesitant. Jamel Elliott. And Walters will be called on the foul. Tanya Sampson again. Even though she has the height disadvantage against Walters, as you see right there, she's able to get underneath, and that is a third foul for Walters. Once again, though, they have a couple more to give. They have five team fouls before they go in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But you can sense for Connecticut that because they're so young, Barubi's a freshman, Walters a freshman, they're a little tentative out there, and Lobo is the one that has to, hey, get me the ball. She must call for it. Just like Tanya Sampson right here, give me the ball. Right now. A foul away from the ball. It stays Carolina's ball. On Mel Elliott. That is her fourth foul. She's done a good job because she got in foul trouble early in the first half. But it's really taken her out of her game as well. It really has. And here's the whole foul and trouble story wow. for both teams. Take your pick. Or Simpson controlling it for North Carolina. Just four, Crawley and Elliott. Two minutes to go. A six-point lead for North Carolina. And North Carolina very content here with letting this clock run down. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Staying with it is Lawrence, but Jamel Elliott with the rebound. Crunch time. 
Down six, it's still only two possessions. And it's off Walter's hands. You can't quite hold on to it. Yet another turnover for Connecticut. Oh, they have made it to the final eight. If they win, it will be their first appearance. Another first last year. We had four first-time teams in the final four. If North Carolina wins, we'll already have the first one back. And number five, Kim Better in there for defensive. And here's the foot race now. No one's going to catch Marion Jones. Now the crawling. And again, the foot speed of, of Marion Jones and Crawley doing a good job of getting down court, positioning her shelf, herself, but unable to get the shot off before the foul. But to say was unable to make the shot, she did get it off. Sylvia Crawley, a second team ACC this year, has played a fine game against the inside strength of Connecticut. Crawley with 12 points, steps to the line, she's been good, two for two. She said against Vanderbilt, she didn't want that to be her last game. As a senior, she realizes that it could be over at any point, and she wasn't quite ready for her career at North Carolina to come to an end. And what a great job she did against Heidi Gillingham, the 6'10 senior from Vanderbilt, held Heidi to 13 points. This is her first free throw of the game. There's all the controlling things for Connecticut. They don't have much time. 128 left. Down by seven. Can't get it to fall. It's Samson with a big rebound over Lobo. And they're going to run with it. Three on one play. Mary Jones. Well, time's running out for Connecticut. At this point, they have to hit some threes. They're down by nine. They don't have a timeout left. Tanya Boone. Ball. And then it's off again to North Carolina. And they're going to pull it up. No, they're not. Right now, they know Connecticut wants to foul them, so they're getting it to open players. Under they have to go. Foul. As you said, Sherry, you have to foul at this point. That's all North Carolina. Wendelin <laughs> Gillingham giving a big flash and a big smile across the way to her family. And oh. Samson connecting on the free throw. Robin, I mean, this is what it's all about. You get the winners, and then, of course, you have the other side. Connecticut, though, has a lot to be proud of this year. Big East champs again, 30-2. And, and Samson with her 28th point. And Connecticut, very young team. They will be back. Here's Rosati blocked by who else? Tanya Samson and Lopo trying to get the foul on Mary Jones, but can't come up with it. And 41 seconds left, 11-point lead for Carolina. Elliott is out of the ball game. And she played at quite a year for Connecticut. As did this lady, Rebecca Lobo. Really a tremendous run for both these teams. Connecticut has not lost a game since January 5th when Seton they lost Hall. to Seton Hall. They have the second longest winning streak, which comes to an end. The 21 games, Louisiana Tech, still alive, has the longest. 23 games in the country. Only two losses during the regular season to Stanford, at Stanford, also lost at Seton Hall, and this defeat in 41 seconds, if it stays as it is. Carolina, I think, Robin, just too powerful in too many different categories for Connecticut to handle. They're very quick, they're very strong, they're very tall. They had a boost with uh, Jamel Elliott going out with eight points. They had a boost from Charlotte Smith, who had to sit out of the game on Thursday, and they didn't relax with their back. They still remained intense. There's a look at uh, Gwendolyn getting Gillingham, just a junior center. Oh, uh, yeah, and Heidi is very proud, I'm sure. She wanted to be playing in this ball game, but her younger sister Gwendolyn is. And they're just 34 seconds away from going to the Final Four. It was really nice, Sherry, when they walked off the court on Thursday, arm in arm. Yeah, they're a very, very close family. They talk all the time. Of course, not all the time about basketball. There are a lot of other things sisters talk about. Right. And they had uh, quite, a, quite a lot to talk about. Sam Weber. Samson again, just relentless. And she comes up with the steal. It was really right in her hands. 
But I'm telling you what, North Carolina, the speed, the quickness, the strength inside, when they go off to Richmond, it's going to be something it to really see. Will. They will play the winner of the Purdue-Stanford game, the West champion they will play. Well, Coach Hatchell had said her strength has been her depth and her balance, so they are just going to rely heavily on that factor, and that is really what did it for them. 29 turnovers for Connecticut. Unable to protect the ball. A little bit of icing here. 29 points. She is enjoying this. Farthest they have ever gone. 29 points, seven rebounds. Final four, baby. Yeah, she was putting up the four on both hands, saying, we're going to the final four. These very loyal and dedicated Connecticut fans, Husky Mania, has now come to an end for both the women and the men last night. Walters, kidding that she would make the basket. She has been the bulk of the offense. 23 points for Connecticut as Stephanie Lawrence is fouled, and that's all Connecticut can do at this point. Down by 12, no timeouts left. 10 seconds left to go in the game. And Sylvia Hatchell will let some of her reserves in to enjoy this moment for North Carolina. And they have worked extremely hard in the last three years to get to this point, and that point being to the Final Four. Sylvia Crawley, the senior, playing slightly injured really came up big against Vanderbilt with 22 points, which was a clear high for her. Jennifer Rosati goes out to a big crowd noise, and, and deservedly so. Samson goes out. And now you see the, the change from intensity to the big smile. The happy-go-lucky. It's a 13-point game now for Samson and Carolina. And that is the, the downside of it. For a winner, there has to be a loser, unfortunately, for Connecticut. Walter's looking down low. Colleen Healy, that's wonderful. She was a walk-off. She was a manager in 91 on the Final Four team and a big crowd favorite. for North Carolina. First it was the second round, Sweet 16, now the final eight, and going to the final four. 81-69 is the final. North Carolina is headed to Richmond. Hope you've enjoyed the game, everyone. We've got three left to come here on ESPN. For Sherry Levin, I'm Robin Roberts and the entire crew here at the East Women's Regional Final. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you on down the road. Take care, everyone. Hi, this is Shape Up and Slim Down with Easy Glider. Call toll-free 1-800-522-7100. We'll bill your credit card three easy payments of $19.95 each.